like in elementary school? I was super shy. And all of a sudden, here I am to entertain people. Tell me a little bit about Ozark. Has it been what you expected? Ozark is one of the most respected TV shows right now. It has been the most incredible experience work-wise. What kind of father are you? My kids are the most important thing in the world for me. Give me a role that you would love to play. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> Hey family, it's Carlos Watson, very special actor stopping by, Alfonso Herrera. You know him from Ozark, he's starring in this final season. Of course, if you're a fan of great Mexican soaps or just terrific cinema in general, you know his wonderful work. He's a father of two, a would-be pilot and aviator, but more than that, he's a lover of the craft. Enjoy Alfonso Herrera. Hey Alfonso. Hi Carlos. How are you my friend? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for asking. Are you in, in LA or are you in Mexico? Where are you today? I'm in Mexico City. Have you ever been to Mexico City? Oh, many times. It's such an artistic and stylish place. I was struck by the sense of design. There's a city in Turkey called Bodrum um, that yeah. also surprises you with how stylish it is. And Mexico City surprised me with how stylish it is. Even the coffee shops had a little more style to them. The food, the culture, it's very rich. You can find amazing restaurants, amazing bistros, but at the same time, you can have like the most amazing taco in, right, in the corner right, of the right, street. Right, right. So that is the incredible cultural balance that this city has. What have you found has been true about Mexico City during COVID? Right now, it's, it's opening very much. We all know the economy in Mexico, like it depends on little and tiny shops. So those shops, they need to be open. And some of them are family business. I think that Mexico City and Mexicans, we've, in a certain way, we've, we've learned how to deal with this virus. It's, it's going in a positive way. Has it been very politically divisive, the idea of mask versus no mask, vaccine versus no vaccine? Fortunately, in Mexico, it, it's not the case. Most of the population, they are in favor of vaccines, in favor of social distance and in favor of, of the use of the mask. During these two years, have you primarily been in Mexico? I spent most of the time in Mexico City. When the pandemic hit, I remember I was in Spain, I was shooting a pilot. When I touched down, Mexico City, Barajas Airport, the airport in Madrid closed down and something very similar happened in Mexico City, like the city little by little started to shut down. I was inside my house with my kids. We thought it was going to last for maybe three weeks, one month. And after that, uh, I received an audition via Zoom to, for a project in Atlanta, which was Ozark. And I got the part and in November I moved to Atlanta and I lived in Atlanta for nine months. It was the second wave of the pandemic when it hit uh, while I was in Atlanta. And, and how did you find Atlanta? It was interesting, Malcolm Gladwell, the writer said that he thinks the most interesting city in the world right now is Atlanta. It was a very good place to live. The people there, they were awesome. And uh, I just have good words towards that city and towards the people of Atlanta. So, uh, Darlene Snell, what do you plan to do? What do you mean? I am getting the name right, aren't I? Mm. The puppy farmer who killed Al and poisoned her product when she was supposed to be a partner. Tell me a little bit about Ozark. Tell me about that experience. Has it been what you expected? Have there been surprises for you? I know obviously you spend, as you said, nine months filming, so that's that's not a small amount of time. It has been one of the most incredible experiences uh, uh, work-wise, having the possibility to work with Jason Bateman, with Laura Lini, people that are so powerful in the Hollywood industry, having the possibility to be with them, to share set with them, to understand how powerful they are and how they use their power in order to help other people. And I think that their generosity is equivalent to the talent that they have. So that's why Ozark is one of the most respected TV shows right now. It was incredible to, to be part of that project. In your preparation uh, for the role, did you end up having interesting conversations with, uh, with any people? I actually, when I was preparing the, 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 the character, I, I spent a lot of time with myself in Atlanta, locked in because with COVID and 
all of that. So I actually prepared it by myself. What I didn't want to do was to go into the cliche. And on the other hand, I think this is why Ozark is so potent and solid because it creates a bigger responsibility. When you talk about drug lords, when you talk about money laundering, people always look into the South and they blame the South. But here you have a story that creates a responsibility that is not just positioned in the South, but it creates a responsibility that is wider. Fast forward for me, if you would, Alfonso, over the next decade, give me a role that you would love to play. I love box. I love box. It's such a beautiful sport in terms of how technical it is and the rhythm and how beautiful some fighters, they, they use their body in order to accomplish their main goal. I think that in some other life, if I choose to be an actor, I would love to play Salvador Sanchez, which was a very popular Mexican boxer. He died in a car crash when he was very young. Unfortunately, I don't have the age. I don't have the body. But maybe in another life, maybe having the possibility to write, to do something with that story. But it, that is something that really moves me a lot to, to tell the story about this boxer that could have been the greatest boxer or the greatest Mexican boxer in history. What were you like in elementary school? Were you a quiet kid, a noisy kid? What were you like? I was, in, I was incredibly shy. I remember my father took me to this uh, playground in Mexico City and there was a, a theater and there was a clown that he always picked a kid from, fr from the audience. And the clown always tried to pick me and I was like, no, 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 please, please, no, no, no. I was super shy. Right. And all of a sudden here I am and this is, this is my job now, like to, to entertain people. And what did your parents do? What did your mother do in Guadalajara? And what did your dad do in Mexico City? Uh, my mom, she works in real estate. Uh, my father, he is a doctor. I have no, <laughs> no family members that, that are in the industry or in the entertainment business. Uh, and my dad, I remember not so long, so long ago, he said, Alfonso, why didn't you choose a job, like a normal job, like a job <laughs> from eight to four? And I said, well, that for me, it's a normal job, but, but here I am. Sometimes when you do something for a while, Alfonso, even if you're great at it, um, sometimes you lose some of that joy or it loses its luster. Do you still get excited about each of these opportunities or is it certain ones yes, certain ones no? I always, always try to look in, into projects that are interesting, characters that are also interesting, because if you have a strong backbone, like a strong story, all the other organs, in my personal opinion, are going to live in a very positive way. I always say that going to set, it's like a ritual. It's something that is going to live forever. So you have to treat being on set like something sacred, and it's something sacred for me. Do you feel most at home in, in not just Mexico, but in other places? Or is Mexico far, far more comfortable for you than say living in Atlanta or Los Angeles or Madrid or other parts? Well, my kids are in Mexico. My family is in Mexico. And I think that richness also comes from family, comes from the entourage of people that you love. And I want to be close to my kids that lived in many parts from the US. Uh, I've been on tour for many, many years all across South America, but I always go back to home. And home is not just a place where you live. Home is something that is inside of yourself. Talk to me a little bit about being a parent. What kind of father are you? I'm just a father trying to do the best of myself. That's, the, that's, that's what I try to do. My kids are the the most important thing in the world for me. How, how old are they, Alfonso? Uh, Daniel, he is five years old, and Nicolás, he's one year old. They are very different. And you are a single father today, is that right? Yes, I am. Everything that I do right now is for them. Nothing is for me. And I think that kids come here to remind us that we need to share. And I think my kids are the biggest blessing that I can ever have. I can tell they are fortunate to have you as well. And also in some ways is an evolution 
for many men in the world, right? There, there certainly was a generation of men at certain times who, who didn't allow themselves to embrace being a father. Was your mother or your father a bigger influence in you being that open about, you know, emotional intelligence as well as, as other kinds? I think my mother, my mother definitely. My mother, she was very emotionally connected to me. She always taught me to have empathy towards people and to be respectful with each and every single person that interacted with me or I interacted with them. Alfonso, may I do something I call rapid fire, where I hit you with five or 10 different questions? <laughs> I'll try to do my best. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, Alfonso, what is your favorite movie of all time? My favorite movie, The Godfather. Let me say that I swear, on the souls of my grandchildren, that I will not be the one to break the peace we've made here today. But I see The Godfather as the trilogy itself, like one, two, three, that's the whole thing. What's your favorite book? The Labyrinth of Solitude, written by Octavio Paz. It's an essay that talks about Mexican people, that talks about how we are, how Mexicans are as a society. It's a very interesting book. If you have the possibility of reading it, it's, it's, it's very interesting. If you could have dinner with anyone, Alfonso, dead or alive, who would you love to have dinner with? With my grandmother. She's no longer with me. And um, she was a very special person. She was a very special person for the family. She had great stories and I learned so much for her, from her, even though I had very little time to interact with her. What's the most beautiful place, Alfonso, you've ever seen in this world? There's a very tiny island in Mexico called Holbox. It's a little tiny beach that has one of the most beautiful sunsets I've ever seen. Alfonso, thank you for joining me, my friend. I hope um, I hope I do come down to Mexico City and get to say hello. I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to meet properly. Carlos, it it will be a pleasure to to welcome you here in Mexico City to have a very good toast with tequila, with mezcal, or 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 with Mexican wine. We have very good wine also. Tiny region, but very good wine. Okay, be safe, be well. Thank you, Carlos. Hey, really hope you enjoyed Alfonso. What an interesting, what a thoughtful, what a just a very human person. I love the way he talked about his grandmother. I love the way he talked about fatherhood. I love the way he talked about connecting to his emotions. And I loved his love of the craft, that idea that every time he comes out, he opens up and that there's still something very magical. Hope he makes that movie about Salvador Sanchez. I'll be watching. All right, listen, I hope that you're enjoying the show. And if you are, don't forget, every weekday, we got a little bit of new magic for you. Come see us. Thank you.